Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning. It's good to say good morning in the house of God. Amen. Good morning to you. Are you good? Are you, are you good? Amen. Amen. Let's just pray. Our Heavenly Father, Baba wetu wa binguni, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Baba wa Yesu Christo, we are humbled this morning ya leo, that you would be mindful of us, kuwa unatuaza, that you would have uh, ordered our steps kuwa and commanded yetu, the season na majira, that we would be gathered here kuwa hapa, just to partake of your table. Ili tukule katika meza yako. We are so thankful sana for calling us your own kwa kutuita watu and wako, choosing us na kutuchagua, and preferring us na kutuchagua, and honoring us na kutuheshimu, forgiving us kutusamehe, and writing our name na kuandika majina yetu, in the book of life. Katika kitabu cha uzima. And this morning once again na ya leo mara tena, we hunger for more of you. Tunatamani zaidi ya that you may build us a house ili utujengee nyumba a spiritual house nyumba ya kiroho that will bring glory and honor to you itakao kuletea utukufu na heshima kwako and we are waiting on you na tunakugojea wewe holy spirit roho mtakatifu our teacher mwalimu wetu and our guide Na wetu. And I surrender myself to you as well. Na jisarimisha kwako pia. Because I'm only an instrument. Kwa maana mimi ni chombo tu. And I thank you. Na nina kushukuru. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Please have your seats. Naweza mkaketi. In the presence of God. Katika uwepo wa Mungu. First of all I want to appreciate the worshipers. Kwanza nataka nifurahie kundi cha cha kuabudu. Please appreciate help me to appreciate them. Nisaidieni kuwafurahia. There was all their choice of songs. Bile wamechagua nyimbo was just they were singing the theme of today. Walikuwa wanaimba kile ambacho nitanenea leo. Just the leo. whole message. Ujumbe wote. And is in the Holy Spirit great. Na si Roho Mtakatifu ni mkuu. He is one. Ni mmoja. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Je uko tayari? So am I. Pia mimi. We are flying over this book. <laughs> Tunaangalia kitabu hichi. Yesterday we were in 6. Jana tulikuwa sura ya sita. Oh, seven. Saba. Melchizedek, the priest who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Melchizedek, kuhani ambaye ni Yesu Christo. Chapter eight, the high priest of the new covenant. Nane, kuhani mkuu wa gano mpia. And we continue on and on. Na tunaendelea. Yesterday night, it was powerful concerning faith. Jana ilikuwa ya ajabu kuhusu imani. Today we land. Leo this tulisoma asubuhi ya leo. Now we land. Now we land. Sasa tunasoma uh, Hebrews 11, 12. Ah, uh, Wahibrania 12, 12. 12. Let's start from verse 18. Tutaanza na 18. Yes, to the end of that chapter. Hadi mwisho. And uh, we can read na tunaweza from soma. NIV version. Tutatumia NIV. Hebrews 12, 18 to 29. Waraka wa Hibrania you have come to um, a mountain that can be that can be touched you have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness gloom and storm maana hamkufikilia hamkufikilia mlima uwezao kuguzwa uliowaka moto wala wingu jeusi na giza Na futa, na, na tufani. To a trumpet blast or to such a voice, speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Nam, namlio wa bara, baragumu na sauti ya maneno ambayo wala walio usikia wali, walisihi wasi, wasiambiwe neno lolote lingine maana hawakuweza kustahimili neno lile lililoamliwa hata mnyama akiuguza huo mlima atapigwa kwa mawe na hayo yalionekana jinsi yalivyokuwa ya kutisha hata msa akasema nimeshikwa na hofu na kutetemeka 
But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Bari nini mmeufikia mlima Sayuni na mji wa Mungu aliye hai Yerusalemu na wabinguni na majeshi ya malaika elfu nyingi mkutano mkuu na kanisa la wazaliwa wa kwanza walioandikwa binguni na Mungu muamuzi wa watu wote na roho za watu wenye haki waliokamilika na Yesu mjumbe wa agano jipya na damu ya kunyunyizwa Inenayo, inenayo mema kuliko ile ya habiri. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Verse 28, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Angalie ni msimkatae yeye anenae Mana ikiwa hawa kuokoka wale waliomkata yeye alie waonya juu ya nchi zaidi sana hatutaokoka sisi tukijiepusha na yeye atuonyaye kutoka binguni ambaye sauti yake ilitetemesha nchi wakati ule lakini sasa ameahidi akisema mara moja tena nitatetemesha si nchi tu bari na bingu pia lakini neno lile mara moja tena Radhihirisha kuhamishwa vile viwezavyo kutetemeshwa. Kama vitu vilivyo umbwa, vitu visivyoweza kutetemeshwa vikai. Basi kwa kuwa tunapokea ufalme usio weza kutetemeshwa. Na mwe na neema ambayo kwa hiyo tumtole mungu ibada ya kumpendeza. Pamoja na unyenyekevu na kicho. Mana mungu wetu ni moto ulao. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the writer of Hebrews presents a picture that's a parallel. Mwandiki ambaye aliandika kitambu hiki anatuonyesha picha ambayo inaandamana pamoja. Between what he says is happening to his recipients at the time of his writing. Upande moja ni kile ambacho kilitendeka wakati alikuwa anaandika and those who received the law in the days of Moses na wale ambao walimpokea Mungu usiku za Musa when God came to meet them to meet his people down um, to meet with his people at the mountain wakati Mungu aliteremka kwa mlima kupatana na watu wake um let's look at Exodus 19 then we, it puts us in perspective of what we are what the writer wants them to understand tuangalie kutoka Exodus 19 kutoka 19 16 to 19 uh, let's start from verse 16 to 19 tuanze na 16 on the morning of the third day there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast everyone in the camp trembled Ikawa siku ya tatu wakati wa asubuhi palikuwa na gurumo na umeme na wingu zote juu ya mlima na sauti ya baragumu ilio iliolia sana watu wote waliokuwa kituoni wakatetemeka Let's look at verse uh, chapter 20 20 18 to 21 but in your notes you write 16 to 19 20 want to go a little bit faster 20 to yeah 18 when the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear and they stayed a distance. 
watu wote wakaona umeme na gurumo na sauti ya baragumu na ule mlima kutoka moshi na watu walipoona hayo wakatetemeka wakasimama mbali they stood afar wakasimama mbali and 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 said to Moses speak to you to uh, speak to us yourself and we will listen but do not have God speak to us or we will die wakamwambia Musa sema nasi wewe nasi tutasikia bari Mungu asiseme nasi tusije tukafa and in your notes you can write up till 21 because you that 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 um that goes all the way to 21 ukiandika uandike hadi 21 kwa maana tunafika pale 21 now this is how the author views this parallel hivi ndivyo mwandiki anaangalia hii hadithi just as israel was on the verge of entering the promised land canaan kama vile waisraeli walikuwa karibu kuingia inchi ya ahadi kanani his hearers or his readers are on the verge of entering the city of God. The Jewish Christians must enter the city of God by faith. Just as the Israelites, they were to enter Canaan through Jordan by faith. Let's describe the scenario here a little bit at Mount Sinai. So now God came down in fire Mungu moto to speak to Moses. Anene Musa. And as he did that, na wakati the hivo, mountain was burning mlima ulikuwa unachomeka. with fire. Ukichomeka kwa and moto. then there was a great cloud na kulikuwa na wingu kuu that covered the mountain. Ambayo mlima. There was darkness. Kukawa na giza. It was gloom. Kulikuwa na giza. And, it, it, and, it, and a storm na kukakuwa na na ma, 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 ma. And, ni kama ni kama sijui kama ni kama dhoruba ama ni kama nini mm -hmm. now the whole mountain trembled mlima wote ukatetemeka violently kwa nguvu sana no. and then it says that there was a trumpet blast like a bomb blast pua na wakasema sauti kama kama mlipo mlipuko as god descended on the mountain wakati mungu alikuwa anateremka katika mlima and then god spoke from the cloud na mungu akanena katika mawingu and, and 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 then the bible says what we read there that the jews were filled with fear na biblia inasema kuwa wayahudi wakajawa na uoga you know just uh, about a year and a half Mwaka moja na nusu ambao umepita I listened to the man who married me. Nikamsikiza mume ambaye alini aliniona. And he persuaded me. Na akanihimiza to climb Mount Kenya with him. Nipande mlima Kenya pamoja naye. Mountain, mlima. That was my mountain experience. Huu ulikuwa ni mlima wangu. I tell you, na kuambia that's the way God would come and speak at the mountain you know it's a journey to get to the mountain kama hivyo ndivyo mungu angekuja anene katika mlima kwa sababu ni safari ukipanda mlima so we had spent very many months getting fit kwa hivyo tulikuwa tumejiandaa miezi mingi so the day came siku ikafika and i'm psyched i'm going to get to the top na ninaamua nitafika pale juu so we began the journey tukaanza safari halfway like um, about like we'd walked all day kama tumetembea siku mzima i began to wonder what came to me nikaanza kujiuliza nini ilinipata what got to me how and you know you can't go back na unajua hatuwezi rudi nyuma i can't go back siwezi rudi nyuma i will never forget sitawai sahau but the beauty of it lakini kile ambacho ni kizuri was how we got to the top ni vile tulifika pale juu and we had some time of prayer na tukakuwa na wakati wa kuomba my 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 aha so when I'm reading this passage Kwa hivyo ninaposoma neno hili that God came down Kuwa Mungu alishuka and the mountain was shaking Na mlima ukatetemeka You know one time I was so tired Siku moja nilikuwa nimechoka sana Don't worry we are still in Bible exposition I just want to tell you this story Msijari bado tunaangalia maandiko I was so tired so I said oh I, I, I spotted a little rock so Nili I want to sit on it. Nilikuwa nimechoka sana nikapata mwamba kidogo nikaketi pale. Then just when I sat on it, it moved. Oh Wakati my gosh. Nimeketi, it's not even a rock. What, what did you call that thing? Uliita it nini? was a badger. You know it looks like a rock. Ilikaa ni kama mjiwe. Mountain experience. Ah, oh, mambo ambayo unapata nayo like katika no mlima. experience. Si mambo ingine so kama ile. So then we came ile. down and he said, "Now let's prepare for Kilimanjaro." I said, wakati tulishuka akasema sasa tujiandae twende kwa Kilimanjaro nikasema wewe uko peke yako 
Let's go back to this text. Turudi katika maandiko. The writer is saying to the Jewish Christians. Anawaambia wa Kristo do not draw back now that you're about to cross Sasa into the very presence of God in the heavenly Jerusalem. Don't do like, you, like your forefathers did. Because in verse 18 where we began, you have not come to, to what may be touched. Kwa maana pale tumesoma inasema hatujafika kwa kile ambacho kinaweza guzwa. Those days what we read if you touch the mountain, you are killed. Even an animal that is minding its own business, if it passed through the mountain, it would be it would be killed. Ata mnyama akiwa katika shughuli zake angeguza mlima angekufa. Any man or animal touching Mount Sinai during the time God was on the mountain, it would be put to death. Mtu yeyote ama mnyama angeguza mlima zayoni wakati Mungu ameshuka angekufa. The people said, "No, we don't want to go." close to God. So now he's telling them, you draw close to him. This is not that mountain where if you touched it, you died. Come close. Draw close to him. This is a different dispensation. When the Jews had such commands and felt God's presence. Those days. They could not bear it. No one could survive. Who came close to God's holiness. The Bible says there in Exodus 19. That even Moses trembled with fear. Don't forget this is the same Moses who had had close encounters with God. So the author is saying under the old covenant men were afraid of God's presence. But under the new covenant every believer can come into God's presence without fear. We don't have to be afraid as the Jews were afraid because under the new covenant we are coming into the presence presence of God who is our loving and merciful heavenly father. Under the old covenant God seemed unapproachable. Mungu hangeweza kukaribiwa. Even the leaders were terrified. Hata viongozi waliogopa. But not so. Lakini si hivyo in the new covenant. Katika agano jipya. Verse 22 the writer says you have come to Mount Zion you have come to Mount Zion to the heavenly Jerusalem the city of the living God he's not saying you will come he says you have come. You are there. You are there. You have come. By faith. By faith. It kupitia. By faith. Kupitia imani. This actually occurs. He inatendeka. It occurs. Inatendeka. By faith. Kupitia imani. The believer actually enters the city of the living God. The author uses the Old Testament um, um, Mount language of Mount Zion. Which is familiar to his readers. Isaiah referred to Mount Zion in Isaiah 18:7. Isaiah kaongelea kuhusu mlima Zion Amos writes about Mount Zion. Amos akaongea kuhusu mlima Zion. Let's look at that one of Amos. It's chapter 1. Amos. The first part of verse 2. Amos. I loved what he said about Mount Zion. Napenda vile anasema kuhusu mlima Zion. Just the first part. He said, "The Lord roars from Zion." Anasema and Mungu thunders from Jerusalem. 
He roars like a lion. You, you can translate directly. Okay. The Lord roars from Zion. And thunders from Jerusalem. Micah, prophet Micah spoke about um, uh, Mount Zion. Micah. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 and 1, we don't need to go there. It says, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established. Verse 2, he says, the law will go from Zion. So Mount Zion is the place where David established the city of Jerusalem. And um, a couple of months back, we had an opportunity to go to Israel. And I always say to Christians and my fellow believers, it is possible if you intentionally decide you intentionally decide Kama uta amua to go kuenda. to visit Israel. The beauty of it, Kile ni so when I'm talking about Jerusalem, Wakati I walked there. Huko. We spent a whole day there. Siku Just kule. visiting everything that could be visited in Jerusalem. Kila mahali so it's exciting for me. This, this scripture is coming alive. Kwa hivo hili linakuwa, linauhai. That David established his uh, the center of um, I mean this was Jerusalem was the center of Jewish religion. And that is where David's son Solomon built the temple. The, the, temple. the earthly Jerusalem, the earthly, the yes. earthly Jerusalem, where yes. we where you go to visit when you go there, is only a copy. It's a mere copy. Ni ile tu of the heavenly Jerusalem. Ya ya the heavenly Jerusalem ya is the city of the living God. Ndiyo muji wa mungu wa it is God's heavenly sanctuary Ni mahali patakatifu pa mungu. where he dwells with M his angels. Mahali na it is the better country Ni inchi bora. where the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac and Jacob Mahala Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were seeking for walikuwa wanatamani recorded in Hebrews 11:6 kulingana na Hebrews 11:6 in verse 23 the author brings in another aspect 23 analeta jambo lingine he says to the church of the firstborn mkutano mkuu wa kanisa la wazaliwa wa kwanza the heavenly jerusalem is also called the church of the firstborn yerusalemu ya binguni inaitwa pia uzaliwa wa kwanza wa mungu and who is the firstborn na mzaliwa wa kwanza ni nani the firstborn is jesus christ himself mzaliwa wa kwanza ni yesu kristo mwenyewe in the kingdom of god katika ufalme wa mungu jesus is the first Yesu Christo ndiye wa kwanza and he is the oldest na yeye ndiye aliye mzee and the scriptures that talk about Rome, the, uh, Jesus as the firstborn na maandiko ambayo yanaongea kuhusu Yesu kama mzaliwa wa kwanza Romans, take note of them Romans 8:29 andika Romans 8:29 Colossians 1:15 wa Korosai 1:15 and Hebrews 1:6 na wa Hebrania 1:6 but by faith in him Na kupitia imani ndani yake we too become firstborns pia sisi tunafanyika wazaliwa wa kwanza in a spiritual sense katika hali ya kiroho we are the firstborn sisi ndio wazaliwa wa kwanza who will inherit the kingdom of god watakaorithi ufalme wa mungu we are members sisi ni washirika of a joyful assembly wakusanyiko linalo linalo kuwa na furaha Christ Church. Kanisa la Kristo. We are members of that church. Sisi ni washirika wa kanisa hili because the names are written in heaven. That's what he's telling this Christian and I'm saying this to you today. Kwa maana anawaambia hawa wa Kristo kuwa majina yao yameandikwa kule mbinguni. You know the membership of that joyful assembly ushirika katika kanisa hilo ambalo limejawa na furaha are not registered per denomination. Haijaandikwa kama kulingana na na madhebu. It doesn't write like okay so this is Anglican. Haiandiki huyu 
huyu and ni this, wa is, this is the member. Na huyu ndiye member. We are members. Sisi ni wa shirika. The body of Christ. Mwili wa Kristo. Imagine we are member we are registered. Oh Sisi my God. Tumeandikwa. It says whose names are written. Ambao majina yao yameandikwa. In heaven. Kule binguni. You remember one time the disciples of Jesus came so excited that they had cast out some demons? Siku moja wanafunzi wakaja kama wamefurahia kuwa wame, wame and he corrected them and changed their perspective he said rather rejoice that your name is written in the book of life na akawarekebisha akawaambia furahini kuwa majina yenu yameandikika katika kitabu cha uzima let's look at verse 23 he tuangalie the writer continues to say to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in the in heaven you have come to god the judge of all men to the spirits of righteous men made perfect we, we already read that verse 23 na Mungu muamuzi wa watu wote na roho za watu wenye haki waliokamilika. The author makes reference to the Old Testament heroes Mwandishi of faith ana, anaangalia mashujaa wa imani that are mentioned in Hebrews 11 just the previous chapter. Ambao wameandikwa katika Waibrania 11. And he says they too na anasema hao pia will be included in that church of the firstborn. Wataletwa pia katika kanisa hilo la wazaliwa wa kwanza. Imagine We are in the same church with Enoch. Ebu fikiria tuko katika kanisa moja na Enoch. Jacob. Yakub, Yakobo. Abraham. Ibrahimu. David. Daudi. Wow! Heavenly assembly. Kusanyiko ra binguni. The church of the firstborn. Kanisa la mzaliwa wa kwanza. That's why we are here. Ndio maana tuko hapa. To be brought into that perspective. Ili tuwekwe katika mwelekeo huo. To be heaven word. Ili tuangtazame binguni. To see beyond. Tuone zaidi. And to see where God is taking you. Na tuone mahali Mungu anatupeleka. It's so exciting. Inafurahisha sana. As you can see I'm enjoying myself. Kama vile mnaona ninafurahia. Now based on what the author of Hebrews writes in this particular verse Tukiangalia kulingana na kile ambacho ameandika katika andiko hili Many Bible scholars think that Wasomi wengi wa Biblia wanafikiria As soon as a believer dies Mala tu muaminio anakufa Their spirits are made perfect Roho inakamilishwa And at once they enter heaven Na mara tu wanaingia mbinguni The heavenly Jerusalem Many scholars seem to agree on that Wasomi wow, wengi wanakubaliana hiyo. And they justify this argument. Na wanaonyesha uh, mawazo haya um, on scripture which we are going to look at right now Luke 23 verse 42 to 43. Kupitia maandiko ambayo tutasoma katika kitabu cha Luka. And we can also assume that the author of Hebrews that that uh, this is also his view. Na pia tunaweza sema kwa wrote it down. Hivi ndivyo pia mwandiki wa wa wa, wa Hebrania alikuwa They justify nawaza. this by this scripture. Walithibitisha kupitia maandiko haya. Then he said that is Luke 23:42. Yes. Then he said Jesus remember me this is at the cross. Eh? Ni katika that, that, pale kwa msalaba. The one that uh, confesses his sin. So Jesus he said Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and they are hanging on the cross. Ako pale katika msalaba anasema nikumbuke ukikuja katika kule paradizo. Jesus answered him. Yesu akamjibu. Truly I tell you. Kwa uhakika nakwambia today. Leo. Today. Leo. Not tomorrow. Sio kesho. Today. Leo. After you are mala tu umekufa. Just that, that second. That Iyo one. Sekunde tu you will be with me utakuwa pamoja nami in paradise peponi so many authors and because it's also in the new testament and it's jesus's words that's what they used to support that when a believer dies kwa hivyo katika kulingana na maandiko inasemekana kuwa wakati muaminio anakufa that they enter the heavenly jerusalem wanaingia katika yerusalemu ya binguni then later when christ comes to earth again because he's going to come for the second return na wakati kristo atarudi kwa maana atarudi mara ya pili their bodies will be resurrected mili yao itafufuliwa and they will receive a new redeemed spiritual body na watapokea mwili mpya ambao umekombolewa which paul explains in romans 8:23 let's look at that ambayo petero anaeleza katika warumi 8:23 when they have 
now later on when Jesus come for the second return baadaye Yesu akirudi katika kurudi kwa pili not only so but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship the redemption of our bodies wala si hivyo tu ila na sisi wenyewe tulio na mali, tulio na maribuko ya roho sisi pia tuna tunaungua katika nafsi zetu tukikutazamia kufanywa wana kufanywa wana yani ukombozi wa mwili wetu so if somebody comes to you and tells you that uh, you know once you died you once you're dead you're dead kwa hivyo mtu akija kwako akwambia wakati umekufa umekufa to tell them the truth uko na maandiko tosha ya kuambia ukweli verse 23 na tatu. we're still there bado tuko pale he says um to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven you have come to god the judge of all men we are looking at that the judge of all men tunaangalia hiyo muamuzi wa watu wote as judge kama muamuzi christ christo the king of glory aliyemfalme wa utukufu will take vengeance of on on our on his enemies ataripisha kisasi kwa maadui zake and then he will vindicate his people na pia atawaripishia watu wake but what the writer wants us to understand lakini vile mwandishi anataka tuelewe is that this judge of all kuwa huyu mwamuzi aliye kristo he is not only our god yeye si tu mungu wetu he is also the god of every other person kuwa yeye pia ni mungu wa kila mtu kila mtu all the other people watu wale wengine wote whose lives you have touched ambao umeguza maisha yao i'm talking to you now ninawazungumzia sasa god of all the people yeye ndiye mungu wa watu wote whose lives you have touched positively wale ambao mmeguza ama mmeadhiri and we're going to come back to this point na tutarejelea haya he is also the god yeye pia ndiye mungu and remember we are defining him as judge na ukumbuke tunamuongelea kama he is also the god pia yeye ni mungu of everyone we have wronged wa kila mtu ambaye tumekosea as a judge kama muamuzi he is impartial yeye hana hana mapendeleo aha he is impartial hana mapendeleo he has no favorites hana mapendeleo but lakini he will also judge his own people pia atahukumu watu wake none of us hakuna mmoja wetu will escape the judgment of god ambaye atapotelea hukumu ya mungu with a title akiwa na jina whether you have a title uwe wewe uko na jina or you have us of you have status ama labda uko na kiwango you no know, anything that you think is a plus or an addon that god gave you kile ambacho unahisi labda mungu alikupatia when we come to the cross tukija katika msalaba we stand below it equal sisi wote tunasimama kama tumetoshana sisi like now won't go to there before him and i'm saying oh, you know reverend emily has come you know unajua labda nikienda pale nasema akasisi emily amekuja the one who spoke the one who taught ambaye the one who pastored akafunza akakuwa mchungaji ah, 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 ah. apana apana the judge of all muamuzi wa wote I'll be right there I'll be right there standing before him. Nitakuwa nimesimama mbele zake. Who knows me? Yeye ambaye analijua. He knows my motives. Anajua ma- he knows kila my intentions. Anajua kile ambacho kinanisikumia kufanya kitu. He knows me kitu. right side up inside out. Analijua ndani nje kila mahali. Before him I cannot pretend. Mbele yake siwezi fanya kitu siwezi jificha. He knows my weaknesses. Anajua udhaifu wangu. He knows me at my worst not now when you think i'm ooh, oh, oh. he knows everything ananijua wakati niko chini kabisa si wakati tu sasa hii unaniona nikiwa vizuri the judge the judge ni muamuzi none of us will escape him hakuna mtu atapotea but the good news lakini habari jema if we obey him kama tutamtii we have nothing to fear Hakuna kitu kinafaa tuogope. Hatufai kuogopa. If you do what is right, ukifanya kilicho sawa, there is nothing to fear. Hakuna kitu ya kuogopa. He's a good judge. Yeye ni muamuzi mzuri. Now, uh, verse um, 24. 24. The author is saying concerning describing Jesus 
the mediator of the new covenant. We read that. Verse 24, when we enter the heavenly Jerusalem, we shall meet Jesus who is also the mediator of the new covenant. And um, you can read further that the references to that is Hebrews 8, 6 and also chapter 9, 15. And he talks about the sprinkled blood. This means through his shed blood on the cross, our consciences are cleansed. Um, the yeah, we were sinners. Tulikuwa wenye dhambi. Forgiven now. Tumesamehewa. But you know Satan likes to condemn us. Lakini mnajua kuwa shetani anataka kutu kutuhukumu. But Jesus' blood cleans our consciences. Lakini damu ya Yesu inaosha hadi mawazo yetu. That's why Paul said, Na ndiyo maana Paulo anasema, I've wronged no one. Hakuna mtu ambaya nimekosea. And you know he persecuted the church. Na mnajua kuwa alitesa kanisa. I've wronged no one. Sija kosea yoyote. Because consciences are cleansed. Kwa maana thamili imeoshwa. Why? Kwa nini? To enable us to enter the heavenly sanctuary. Kutuwezesha kuingia katika mahala patakatifu binguni. And draw near to God. Na tukaribie mungu. Jesus' blood speaks a better word. Damu ya Yesu inanena mambo bora. Than Abel's, than, uh, than Abel's blood. Kuliko damu ya habiri. The blood of Abel cries for vengeance. Damu ya habiri inalia ilipishiwe. Against that, that his brother, Sinfu, Kin, who killed him, Cain. Kinyume na dugu yake ambaye alimuwa. But the blood of Jesus. Lakini damu ya Yesu. Cries out for mercy. Inalia ikiita rema. For sinful men. Kwa watu ambao ni wanyadamu. His blood speaks of forgiveness. Damu yake inalia. And reconciliation with God. So here the author contrasts the blood of Jesus with that of Abel. So the blood of Jesus. Because it reconciles. Kwa maana inarejesha. It opens the door. Inafungua mlango. It opens the door. Inafungua mlango. But this kind of uh, blood that, um, that uh, cries uh, vengeance. Lakini damu aina hii ambayo inalia ilipishi ilipishiwe. It shuts the access. It, it, it shuts that access to God. Inafunga mlango huo usifikie Mungu. The blood of Jesus is gracious. Damu ya Yesu ina neema mingi. It's full of grace. Imejawa na neema. That's why he's interceding for you and I. Na ndio maana anakuombea wewe na mimi. And please his sacrifice. Na anaongea kuhusu sadaka yake because that sacrifice is what was the justification for our forgiveness. Kwa maana hiyo dhabihu ndio ambayo ilifanya tusamehewe. Nothing else. That's why without his death, without the cross. Hakuna lingine ndio maana bila damu yake bila There is no reconciliation with God. Hakuna kurejeshwa kwa Mungu. That's what the author is telling these Jewish Christians. Ndio mwandishi anaambia wa Kristo hawa. And it's also relevant to us today. Na pia inatuongelesha siku ya leo. Verse 25. 25. We're talking about that um, he, again he appeals to his readers don't refuse him who's speaking. If the people in the Old Testament who refused him, they refused the voice of God. When he came down Mount Sinai to speak with them. And at the end, they still did not heed to God's voice. Even after God coming down. Today, God continues to speak to us. Even now. Hebrews 3, 7 to 12, it says, do not harden your hearts. As you hear his, the word, as you hear his voice speaking to you. Verse 26, the author makes reference to Haggai's prophecy. Which is recorded, it's a prophecy of Haggai. It's recorded in chapter 2, verse 6 of Haggai. Haggai 
And it, it refers to when God spoke to the Jews on Mount Sinai. Na inaongea wakati Mungu alinenea Wayahudi katika mlima Zayuni. That the mountain trembled violently. Kuwa mlima ulitetemeka kwa nguvu. So he he says that later anasema baadaye another shake up will come. Kutatetemeka tena. That will, that will be far greater than the time of Mount Sinai. Ambayo utakuwa kuu kuliko wakati wa mlima Zayuni. And he says both earth and heaven will be shaken. Na anasema bingu na nchi zitatetemeka. And this is further confirmed in Revelation 21 verse 1. We need to look at that. Na pia inadhibitika katika ufunuo moja. Revelation 21 verse 1. Ufunuo 21 that that shake up is coming. Kuwa kutetemeka huko kuna God is going to shake the earth and the heaven. Kuwa Mungu atatengiza nchi na dunia. In our minds we don't even know what that means. It's, it's beyond even hatujui. understanding. Inazidi kuelewa kwetu. So then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Kisha nikaona bingu mpya na nchi mpya. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Kwa maana bingu za kwanza na nchi ya kwanza zimekwisha kupita. And there was no longer any sea. How? Wala hapana bahari tena. There was no sea. Hapakuwa na bahari. That's what he saw. Hivyo ndivyo aliona. One day. Siku moja. That's what the author is saying. Ndivyo mwandishi anasema. And the day is coming. Na hiyo siku yaja. God will destroy both the earth and the earth and heaven. Mungu ataharibu bingu na nchi. Beautiful skyscrapers, whatever you see. That's why you should not be so carried away and you know, you know you start feeling Oh I'd, I wish I had that you know to the point of feeling so discouraged that you don't have this or makes you desire to to be so greedy to go for things Hizo vitu zote tunaona nyumba kubwa ndio maana hatufai kukaa ni kama tumetosheka tumefika hadi unakaa ukisikia uko na na, na wivu kwa maana huna kihili ama lile Bible says they will be destroyed Biblia inasema itaharibiwa How we do not know vile itaharibika hatujui even heaven itself will be destroyed hata bingu itaharibiwa then he will come up with a new heaven and a new earth na atatengeneza bingu mpya na bingu inchi mpya so the author is just reiterating what prophet hagai had written about mwandishi anaendelea kurudia kile nabii hagai alikuwa amesema verse 27 27 the earth being shaken means bingu ambayo inchi ambayo inatikizwa inamaanisha what can be shaken anything created of god kile ambacho kimeumbwa na Mungu kinaweza tingizwa but there are those that cannot be shaken lakini kuna ile ambayo haiwezi tingizwa that will remain hicho kitabakia that will remain hiyo itabakia and mark writes it and explains what some of the things that cannot be shaken mark 1331 we need to see that mariko 13 Some things will be shaken but some will not. Vitu vingine vitatikizwa, vingine havitatikizwa. Mark 13:31 Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Bingu na nchi zitapita lakini neno langu halitawahi pita. The word of God. Neno la Mungu will not pass away. Halitaisha. So in verse uh, uh, 20, 20 28 and 29 He's coming to a close of that chapter. It's Ana, coming it's coming to the end of that chapter. Anamalizia uh, hilo andiko. He says that we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Anasema kuwa tunapokea ufalme usioweza kutetemeshwa. So some of the things that will not be shaken is this kingdom. Kwa hivyo mambo moja vila vitu ambavyo havitatetemeshwa ni that's what we have received. Na hiyo ndio ambayo tumepokea. That is what we have come to. Hiyo ndio ambayo hapo ndipo tumepiga. That is what we have been given. Hiyo ndio ambayo tumepewa. Kingdom. Ufalme. We have become heirs. Sisi tumefanyika wazi. Of the kingdom of God. Wa ufalme wa Mungu. That cannot be shaken. Ambayo haiwezi kutetemeshwa. It cannot be shaken. Haiwezi kutetemeshwa. The kingdom of God. Ufalme wa Mungu. And he says we must be thankful for it. Na anasema ni lazima tuwe tunashukuru. We must be aware of it. Ni lazima tujue. We must have a, an attitude of gratitude. Ni lazima tuwe na mawazo ya shukurani. Even if you didn't get the things that you wanted so many things. Hata kama haukupata vile vitu vingi We have been given. Tumepewa a kingdom. Ufalme. That is, that that has an assurance. Ambao uko na unadhibitisho. 
hawezi tingizwa it is great grace that he has given us ni neema kuu ambayo ametupatia now that ours is an unshakable kingdom sasa kwa maana ufalme wetu ni ufalme ambao huwezi tingizwa the writer instructs mwandishi anashauri to because of that then we must worship god acceptably kwa maana ya hiyo ni lazima tumuabudu Mungu katika ibada ambayo inakubaliwa. Our worship must be acceptable to him. Kuabudu kwetu ni lazima kukubarike. Can you imagine he's just been talking about the kingdom of God? Fikiria kuwa amekuwa kuhusu ufalme wa Mungu. Na vile tulivyo walithi wa ufalme ule. How do we respond? Je, unafaa kufanya nini? Our worship. Ibada very critical to god ya muhimu sana kwa mungu that our worship must be acceptable ibada yetu ni lazima ikubarike and how is na, that na inawezekanaje in reverence and awe we sang that in the second song that the worship team was leading us in katika ku, ku reverence and in awe katika kuheshimu na kutetemeka even if we are bequeathed with such a kingdom hata kama tumepoa ufalme kama huu powerful kingdom ufalme wa nguvu citizens of heaven wa, o, 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 citizens wa binguni we must keep in mind ni lazima tuweke katika mawazo that our worship must be in reverence and awe ni lazima ibada yetu iwe ni katika kuheshimu na, kum, na kumnyenyekea Mungu and we know that our worship worship is beyond a song It's na tunajua kuwa ibada inazidi tu wimbo It's about our lifestyle. Ni nahusu jinsi tunavyoishi. Lifestyle. Reverence. Jinsi tunavyoishi. A deep respect for God. Kuheshimu katika hali iliyo iliyo umeheshimu sana. Not being casual with him. Si kuwa tu vile na Mungu. In Hebrew, the root word of this uh, reverence katika wahibrania neno hili la heshima is, is lying prostrate. Ni kulala chini. You know we do that when we are when the presence of God we are singing and we lie prostrate. Tunafanya hivyo wakati tuko katika uwepo wa Mungu tunalala chini. But that should be our lifestyle. Lakini hiyo inafaa iwe ndivyo tunaishi. Not physically not just physically lying down prostrate. Si kulala tu katika mwili chini. But in our offices, in our marketplaces, in our families, in our house when we are alone. Lakini katika maofisi, katika mahala petu pa kazi, wakati tuko nyumbani, wakati tuko peke yetu. In our conversations, katika in our relationships, katika kuzungumza, katika uhusiano that this reverence kuwa For heshima God hii ya Mungu goes with us wherever we go. Inaandamana nasi pahali pote tunaenda. The reverence. Since heshima. we are heirs of a kingdom that is unshakable. Kwa maana sisi ni warithi wa ufalme ambao huwezi tikizwa. Our worship. Ibada yetu reverence and all. Ikiwa ya heshima. Oh. Someone sang to stand in awe of his majesty. Mtu akaiba kusimama katika heshima ya Mungu aliye mkuu. What does that mean? Inamaanisha nini? To feel appropriately small Kuhis- in the presence of the sovereign God. Kuhisi kabisa ukiwa mdogo ama duni sana katika uwepo wa Mungu. That's the attitude. Hiyo ndiyo mawazo. Small. Mdogo. Small. Dogo. Compared to the sovereignty to the, maj- the majestic god ukilinganishwa na mungu of splendor mungu mkuu and glory aliyejawa na usukufu mdogo we feel small not low self esteem i'm not talking about those esteem things si ile hali ya kutojidhamini attitude mawazo how do you see yourself je unajiona aje to exalt to hold him in high regard kuinua na kumheshimu katika hali ya juu and you know what he says na unajua anasema nini <laughs> you know why is in verse 29 ishirini na tisa. because our god maana mungu wetu is also a consuming fire ni moto ulao masifu loving anayetupenda you know is one you know we have a tendency of lying on that side you know you just think about how good god is tunafikiria sana kuhusu upande huo wa ambao mungu anatupenda we preach grace 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 oh god is good na tunanena kuhusu neema 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 oh he is a good god mungu ni mzuri ni mungu mzuri he is also consuming fire pia ni moto ulao that's god 
Huyo ndiye Mungu. That's our father. Huyo ndiye Baba yetu. Consuming father. Moto ulao. And I'll give you references for that. Deuteronomy 4:24. Isaiah 33:4. I tell you, the godless are terrified by that side of God. Wale watu ambao hawamchi Mungu wanaogopeshwa na upande huo wa Mungu. But remember, lakini kumbuka. If you obey Ukiti, if you do what is right. Na ukifanya kilicho sawa. You don't need to be afraid. Uhitaji kuogopa. No, no, no. Hapana. No, no, no. Hapana. It is those who re- deliberately reject him. Ni wale ambao wamekataa. They will never know. Hawatawahi jua that side of God. They will only know this side of consuming fire and punishment. Watajua tu upande huu mwingine wa Mungu ambao ni moto ulao. So he says in view of all this that I've spoken to or written to you about. Anasema tukiangalia mambo haya yote ambayo nimenenea. All men must come to God with reverence and in awe. Watu wote ni lazima waje kwa Mungu katika kumheshimu. Because he's mighty to save. Kwa maana yeye anaweza He's okowa. also mighty to punish. Na pia anaweza adhibu. Our God is a consuming fire. Mungu wetu ni moto ulao. And I want us to go back to what I told you would go back as judge of all. Nataka tuangalie kile nilisema tutaangalia kuhusu His judge for the, to those whose lives you have touched. Ni muamuzi wa wale watu ambao umeadhiri katika maisha yao. I want you to just um think quietly. Nataka uwaze tu one person or three people that you have your life has touched them. Ufikirie kuhusu mtu mmoja ama wawili ambao umeadhiri katika maisha positively katika hali ambayo ni nzuri whether they appreciated you <laughs> iwe labda walifurahia or they even forgot ama hata labda walisahau but you touched their lives lakini uliguza ama uliadhiri maisha yao you did something for them uliwafanyia kitu that impacted them ambayo iliwaadhiri i'm giving you time ninakupatia wakati so he's their god yeye ni mungu wao those ones how you impacted them ambao uliadhiri in one way or the other katika jia moja ama nyingine god used you mungu akakutumia you sacrificed something ukapeana kitu you needed it you gave it away labda ulihitaji lakini ukaona uptoe we you wiped someone's tears ukapanguza machozi ya mtu god is judge of that Mungu ni muamuzi wa hiyo. He remembers that. Anakumbuka hiyo. It's written in one of his books. Imeandikwa katika vitabu but zake. But he also judges that. Kuwa pia ni muamuzi wa hiyo. Then, tena, he is also a judge. Pia ni muamuzi to those you wronged. Kwa wale ambao ulikosea. You wronged them intentionally. Labda uliwakosea ukitaka or unintentionally. Ama labda haukutaka. Things just happened. Mambo tu ilitendeka. He's a judge of those. Pia ni muamuzi wa hao. Those ones. How pia he listens to their cry. Anasikiza kilio chao. Those ones. How that man that woman that child that person that sister that brother huyo mme huyo mke huyo dada huyo kaka huyo mtoto you know yesterday day before yesterday when bishop ron was talking about forgiveness juzi wakati askofu alikuwa anaenea kuhusu kusamehe there is someone in my family my someone like her father kuna mtu katika familia yangu ambaye anaweza muita baba that had hurt me terribly during the death of my dad ambaye alikuwa amenikosea sana wakati babangu aliaga and ever since na toka hiyo siku and ever since i've never i'm talking about this one you call reverend are you getting what i'm saying ninazungumza kuhusu huyu ambaye unaita kasisi i was carrying that hurt nilikuwa nimebeba huo mzigo it was so painful ilikuwa ya uchungu sana when my dad's body is lying in the mortuary wakati mwili wa babangu uko kule katika tumba na wakati huo there pale two days ago siku mbili ambazo zilipita i had to let it go ni lazima ningeiachilia and you know why na unajua kwa nini on monday when we came here jumatatu tulipokuja hapa 
I received a call. Nikapokea simu that his wife had died. Kuwa mke wake ameaga. My auntie, my auntie. Uh, shangazi and I, yangu. I didn't even pray. Na hata sikuomba. You see how bad that heart is. Unaona vile hiyo roho imekuwa mbaya. Whether you are a pastor or you are a hot. Uwewe ni kasisi ama wewe ni nani? That day Iyo siku, I wept nikalia. and I began to pray for him the pain in his heart. Na nikaanza kumuombea na uchungu mourning, katika uchungu ambao wanaomboleza. His children are mourning their mother. Watoto wake wanaomboleza mama yao. I, I had told bishop you think I'm going for that funeral? Oops. Nilikuwa nimeuliza ambia oh. askofu That's why our God is judge. Mungu wetu ni muamuzi. We cannot pretend in his presence. Hatuwezi jificha katika uwepo wake. He is God to those you have wronged. Yeye ni muamuzi kwa wale ambao umekosea. And he is God to those who have wronged us. Na ni Mungu kwa wale ambao wametukosea. So I want you in the few seconds that I have. Na nataka katika sekunde chache ambazo zimebakia think about those people fikiria kuhusu hao watu one or two mmoja ama wawili and then unlike yesterday na yesterday we went to someone who you do not know jana ulienda kwa mtu ambaye haumjui to share the love of love of jesus with them ushiriki upendo wa kristo na yeye but today lakini leo i want you to go to someone who you know Nataka uende kwa mtu ambaye unajua Even if it's you don't know them very well now we are brothers and sisters Hata kama labda haumjui sana tumekuwa dada na dugu and I want you as I I humbly ask the worship team that song of consuming fire Na kama kikundi cha sifa kinatuongoza katika wimbo wa moto ula Listen to the instructions ula. but there there's, there's an exam I nearly failed because I did not listen to the instructions Kuna mtihani nilikuwa karibu nikose kwa maana sikufuata maagizo What I want you to do. Kile nataka ufanye. You see our father is loving. Unaona vile baba yetu anatupenda. But he's also a consuming fire. Lakini pia ni moto ulao. And his judge. Na yeye ni muamuzi. Impartial, impartial. He, he ni, doesn't lean on, he doesn't favor. Ni muamuzi ambaye hana mapendeleo. Stands for justice. Anasimamia haki. He's got to those you wronged. Yeye ni Mungu kwa wale ambao unapenda. You don't even need to tell anyone the story. Hata hauhitaji uambie mtu. Don't tell the story of don't tell the way I've said mine. Mine I, I said the one I was wronged. I nearly died. I was so mad. Ile ambayo niliumizwa ni karibu nife nilikuwa nimekasirika sana. But uh, I'm talking about those that you have hurt. Lakini naongea kuhusu wale ambao wewe umeumiza. You wrong them in one. And I said in, an intentional. Sometimes you can hurt someone or wrong somebody and you didn't intend. Wakati mwingine unaweza kosea mtu na labda haukutaka. But you know ukosea. they are. Lakin, they feel wrong. Lakini unajua walihisi wamekosewa. So as we sing that song standing up on your feet. Tunapoimba huo wimbo kama tumesimama. Before we sing Kabla hatujaimba huo wimbo. I want you to go to someone who knows you. Nataka uende kwa mtu ambaye anakujua and you tell them to hold you to account. Na umu, that you will make right. Na umuulize kuwa atakusaidia kurekebisha. You know when it comes to you know there's one thing to ask for forgiveness. Ni jambo moja kuomba msamaha is another to reconcile. Na ni lingine pia kupatana. Some we may never reconcile. Wengine labda hatuwezi patana. But some you can tell lakini wengine unaweza ambia I'm sorry I was wrong. Niwie ladhi nilikuwa nimekosa. And that's it. Na iko hivyo. But so long as we leave it there, lakini bora tuko pale. Satan has something to accuse us. Satan yako na kitu ya kutuhukumu mbele za uwepo wa Mungu. Are we there? Are we tuko pale. So I want you first to walk to someone that just hold their hand and let them hold you. Tembea tu kwa mtu mshike mkono na pia akushike. someone shika mtu someone make effort you know look at i didn't say the one next to you hiyo haina effort sikusema no. yule ambaye mmeketi there is no effort there Hiyo just, just just like that just effort you know Tem, that tembea atafanya kitu someone mtu someone you know mtu ambaye unajua okay now we are not talking we are not talking uh, i didn't i didn't tell you to talk sikuambia muongee 
I want you to hold both hands. Nataka umshike mikono yote mbili. Both hands, both hands. You know when you look face each other both hands, ukimwangalia, you are now looking at each other. Mnaangaliana. Both hands. Mikono yote mbili. Eyeball to eyeball. Jicho kwa jicho. Eyeball to eyeball. Jicho kwa jicho. God's people, please listen to instructions. Oh. Watu wa Mungu tafadhali sikizeni maagizo. We are not talking. Hatuongei. Eyeball to eyeball, jicho kwa jicho and tell them. Na uambie, he's a loving father. Yeye ni Mungu ambaye anatupenda. But he's also consuming fire. Lakini pia ni moto ulao. Do what you have to do. Fanya kile ambacho unafaa kufanya. When you have time. Wakati uko na muda. Consume.